Hey guys, it's Sarah here from Brisbane, Australia and welcome to my actually slightly more tidy than normal art studio. Since I painted this little wee scene, I have since managed to tidy up the right mess that the studio was in and somewhat return it to a little bit of okay. It's still a mess, but it's much better than normal. <laughs> So obviously today we are going to be painting this little wee um, sunset scene in acrylics on a small canvas. We will be going through the colours that I've used, um, any potential chances you have to change those colours if you don't quite have them. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the pigment theory and things that go along with them and you know like why they might not quite work if you change it around a little bit. And I'll be talking you through step by step what I did to get this little sunset scene. It's a relatively easy one. Maybe a confident beginner um, would be would be appropriate for this one. Alrighty, let's. Alrighty, folks. So here we are. We're going to get started on the painting. Obviously, first of all, it does actually help if um, you subscribe to the channel, and then you can get the updates. Makes me feel good. Um, it's my poor, um, dislocated, or nasty thumb. It's been a bit tricky, but that's okay. Thankfully, um, very gentle. Yeah, I had to change the tube hand there because I can't actually squeeze with that hand at all. Gentle painting I can manage. I'm not allowed to write. Um, I can't do that. And there's just a whole heap of stuff that I really can't do with it. But because the paintbrush actually rests on um, my uh, first finger, it actually isn't too bad. So the first thing we're doing here is um, just toning the canvas with some burnt sienna. I've just used some of the clear painting medium um, as well. You could thin it down a little bit with a bit of water, but it does tend to unbind the paint a bit if you use too much, so it's best to use some medium if you possibly can. Um, benefits of toning the canvas is just you have a warm colour that kind of seeps through, um, stops you getting those little tiny white bumps in your canvas when you don't put too, enough paint on. Um, it's a you know, really bad habit that I am dreadful at. Now we're just mixing up a sky colour. Um, I'm using the cooler cerulean blue on the left there and just a little bit of the ultramarine which is the warmer blue uh, just to uh, make the sky look a little bit cooler against some of the warmer um, sunset tones that are going to be um, in the sky. So sort of mostly cerulean, a little bit of ultramarine, um, a dash of the burnt sienna there which is an orange which sort of desaturates the blue a little bit and then obviously lots of white. I just got the paint off the little brush there um, on the canvas and then went over it with the bigger um, bigger brush. Um, I do struggle a little bit getting the paint on the canvas because I can't um, I don't have very delicate grip on that brush at the moment um, so there are a little bit a couple of little holes in there that you can see through to the canvas and things so I figure if I can do it with a, um, a dodgy thumb and a thumb immobilization brace on it then you guys can probably do it too. And so I am just then adding a little bit of extra white down the bottom of the blue and then just going back in with a slightly darker, slightly more um, sienna and ultramarine colour into the sky. Um, if you wanted to use a little bit of purple, um, dioxazine or something you could as well, but um, just be careful not to put too much in. Then we're mixing up a bright colour to go down the bottom. So I am using a, that's cad yellow medium with a little bit of cad red medium um, and a dash of um, a dash of white. Now look, I would have preferred to have used cad um, yellow deep for this because it's a more orangey hue and mixing it with the, um, and the cad light as well. Um, so I would have preferred to have used cad yellow deep and cad yellow light um, just to get the, um, you know, a brighter orange, but I could get the paint lids off the tube so um, we went with what I could get um, and it does make a little bit of a difference just because um, the cad medium is slightly less warm and um, the cad medium is also slightly less warm as well um, but you know it, it it does for what I needed it to do I guess and then I've just mixed up a very light it's got a little bit of sienna and a bit of ochre and um, I put a smidgenous little bit of blue in there as well be careful not to put too much because blue and yellow make green and you don't want a great big green stripe in your sky so I suggest waiting till that blue is relatively dry and don't put your yellowy brush up into your sky otherwise you're going to make a green muddy mess um, and I'm just gently knocking that in. And you'll see here I put a couple little holes in the canvas, um, you know, the paint layer with, with the brush. I think I've like edited it out a little bit um, just because I can't quite get the, um, the movement right with my, um, with my thumb. Then I'm just going in with some very, very light blue just to put a couple of little streaky bits in the sky for a little bit of um, added um, 
added interest most of it gets painted over but um, it also means you can you know knock off any little holes or any little blebby bits that you're not amazingly happy of if you get a tiny little streak of green in the sky or something like that you might be able to go over it with this too when it is dry and then you can see here I'm just popping in a sun I've started off with a slightly yellowish paint again struggling getting a, a clear circle here um, and uh, just going around it with a little bit of um, uh, red and yellows and things just to create a little bit of a, a sun shape. Try not to get too many like darky blue greeny colors down into this when you're mixing this up. Make sure your brush is clean from like the purple and um, if you've used purple and the blue um, just obviously because you're, you're mixing these really bright colors and you really don't want them too badly dulled. Um, as I said I would have probably preferred to have used Cad Yellow Deep and maybe um, their CAD red light but I couldn't get the lids off so there we go and we're just sort of um, putting some of the the orangey colors sort of coming out from out from the sun we're going to be going over this an awful awful lot so um, it's not um, not too bad if it's looking a little bit streaky or anything at this time um, and now I'm just mixing up sort of a dirty um, reddy orange color in there. So I did add some blue, which will uh, sort of desaturate it, just a smidgen as well, and some sienna, um, because that's like a, um, you know, quite a desaturated orange as well. So you're looking for something, you know, a bit, um, a bit terracotta, maybe a dull terracotta sort of kind of a color in there. Um, you can see the color on the canvas that I've got um, got there. Um, and we're just sort of putting some little little lines um, sort of just around the sun. Um, try not to try to make the cloud a little bit interesting. Like I, I kind of felt that it was a little bit um, symmetrical at this point. Um, and um, I'll be fixing that a little bit later on as well. And then I just added a little bit of white to that and a smidgen more. I must have put a little bit of more of a yellowy uh, tone in it as well. Um, probably the cad medium I would suggest and I'm just sort of um, going over the tops of those. Now I'm mixing up a cloud color. <laughs> yes, yeah, I was a little bit wobbly there. I was trying to show you the color I was mixing. Um, and we're just going to be popping in some uh, sort of more violet clouds up the top there. So we're looking for a desaturated purple. So I've used ultramarine with some red. Um, I think I'd put a teeny bit of the doxazine purple in there um, as well. You don't want it too purple. You do want it to look a bit um, a bit muted and we're just sort of going um, you know the further away you get from the sun um, the, the the darker these these tones um, are going are going to be and I'm just sort of you know knocking in a few knocking in a few clouds and then also putting some of the um, that those orangey colors back into the middle of those clouds because they have some more they're a bit more at the front and um, have a little bit more of the light from the sun that is managing to hit them I'm a bit of a messy painter and I do not work on one section and then the other and while I've got that you know color on my brush you know go around and touch up some of the areas that need it making sure I don't get the purple down into the the lower sections of the sky though and I'm just sort of knocking it in I've got a round brush there and I'm, I'm just figuring out exactly how much light I want up in those top clouds and I do play around a little bit with them again some of the paint was coming off the canvas a bit because I was um, not able to push with um, the, the correct amount of pressure that I wanted um, with the thumb but that's okay <laughs> it makes it a little bit messy with those clouds but that's okay and then as you can see here I'm just going around with that slightly lighter colors and just sort of knocking them in on the tops of those clouds um, just to, oh, as you know there's a little bit of blue on top of some of those clouds those, those very um, these ones here I'll try and point to it um, just ever so slightly a little bit of purple just to bring a little bit of that purple down into there and now we're going around with a lovely color this is um, the Naples yellow I love Naples yellow it's such a useful color it is blend um, you probably could mix it but it's just nice it's a convenience color to have on the palette so it's mixed up with some yellows and white um, but it's a really nice color and you just want to go around you want it slightly desaturated so add a little bit of white to it um, and you just want to sort of knock the bottom of most of the clouds um, and um, you know if you've got those bits that are sticking forward in the purple clouds so under underneath the red bits of those you put it on there as well um, 
basically this is the really brightest light from the sun that's hitting the bottom of um, the clouds because the sun's underneath them so you don't want to be putting this too much around the top um, you could sort of feather it around you know like the edges a little bit but um, mostly it's going to be sitting um, sitting underneath and then I'm just brightening up the the bottom of that cloud so it's not quite all the same shape so just popping in some um, brighter yellows again being careful not to get you know like the violets or anything um, in there um, so keep that slightly darker more dirtier terracotta sort of on the top of that one and then just we're adding in some white and some sort of brighter yellow and a slightly brighter orange so an orange with a little bit um, more of the yellow a little bit of the red and just a little bit less of the um, you know like sienna -y kind of colors and then just you know brightening up that area and just sort of working with it as I said I'm a bit of a um, you know adjust as I go along painter rather than you know like painting it perfectly you know straight up um, and then you know as I said well I've got the color on the brush you know I'll go around and just adjust areas that perhaps um, needed it also don't forget acrylics they they tend to dry a little bit darker um, and one or two layers of them um, will always make them look that little bit better than um, doing just you know one layer of these things and if it's looking a little bit dull try adding another layer before you add like say um, you know like white over the top of it because um, sometimes if you just add, you know, like white over the top of it to try and, um, you know, brighten it up or something, it can make it look chalky and desaturated. And that might not be what you want. So perhaps try just adding another layer of the color you were using if it just isn't working out quite what you want. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of a mark in that top cloud there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the obligatory photos halfway through. Got a block about it. No. <laughs> anyway. Um, just adding some slightly grey sort of like wispy clouds around up on the top in there as well the grey purple and just sort of you know playing with the clouds to make them look how I want them to the further back there you've got a little bit of purple and there you can see I'm putting a little bit of that sort of purpley color just on top of one or two of those clouds that are down the bottom I'm um, not too much because we want to try and um, keep them relatively you know distinct the red cloud and the purple cloud but at the same time you kind of want to not be too stark about that then just adjusting the amount of light that's sort of you know going through there um, another tip here you can always use like a dryish brush just to sort of blend through the I think that's what I'm doing there anyway just going back through and um, sort of trying to knock the edges so they're a little bit smoother um, in there as well um, depends on how long you want to spend on it I could have spent a lot longer on this sky and got those clouds a lot smoother than they are but um, I didn't. I think the time, the whole timestamps for this video were uh, about um, just an hour, so that's not too bad considering um, everything. Now I do have the chromium um, green oxide on my palette. There, you don't need to use that. Uh, you could have just used just what I also mixed in there was just ultramarine and the yellow um, to mix this green. Um, and I'm just adding a little bit of the orangey colors and um, a little bit of red just sort of into there. So it's just sort of the same colors that I used in the sky um, just to, you know, add some lights and things into um, into the grass. Now, I wasn't planning on doing a foreground in this at all, other than maybe just leaving it like that. And then I was like, oh, well, you know, like we're here. I wanted to play with my new color, which is a chromium green, which I actually didn't use very much in the end. <laughs> um, and... I just sort of have a little bit of a play so this was unprepared um, this this bit here and I kind of just came along the way it, it, it came along so I'm popping in some um, general sort of mountains in the background um, so the general rules that you have for mountains that you know are receding in the distance you know often they'll they'll appear quite dark and like a sunset you know um, like this but they're also very not green so um, the further away they are you know green loses its um, you know yellowy colors over the distance so you're going to want to be using some blues and things into your um, um, into your mountains and because there's a lot of light coming from the sun I'm adding in some you know orangey reds which is probably quite good because you know like those back mountains are going to be bluey violets and if you're adding in reds into the blues you're going to get some red um, you know purpley colors and things in there so it kind of all blends all um, relatively well and I'm just putting the light on the sides of the mountains that you can um, probably imagine it being um, 
you know bounced off from where that sun is so that's both sides of uh, that mountain underneath the sun and then also on the you know sort of um, you know the, the slopes that are sort of facing the sun that are further away there is just you know the hint of a little bit of what would have been snow on there and um, I then go back and put some little um, splashes of yellow light I guess over them um, uh, you know a little bit later on the sienna in the foreground that was underneath you know that first coat we did is actually really quite good it's warming up that front part of the painting quite nicely and then i'm just putting in a slightly darker um you know more blue and green down in the that front part of the um um the painting there as well and i didn't like this this didn't work i couldn't get the brush to work the way i needed it to work and i put um some far too um fresh green um paint on there and it's like well that obviously didn't work so um i was just rushing that i think being far too quick and i'm like okay well let's let's mix up and we'll put some you know bushes and trees and things in the front of it instead of doing that you know I just play around with these things and it's a really good idea like when you um you know just to play and see 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 what sorts of things you like to do um and I was just popping in some you know, longer little bits of grass and things in there and that didn't really work then I got out my trusty really old splayed hog bristle brush and just popping in you know like the the um you know the hint of some bushes and things in there um hints with these uh the drier your brushes so if it's a really soggy drippy water wet brush that is not gonna work dry it off um as best you can before you do this and i'm popping some of the darker colors on the left and the right hand side making sure from a compositional perspective that um there's a little bit of up you know on the mountains and up on the trees just around the the outside edges there um and then just popping in some quite bright um uh, tiny little hints not too much of um, white with a little bit of yellows and things that are um, down in the down in the front there um, added a couple of different yellows and things in some different areas to add a little bit of interest and then tried to keep most of the green still though relatively muted it's just sort of like you know little bits of light that'll be bouncing off from the front there I don't know maybe there's some cars there with some headlights in the front of that as well you know you never know um, and as you can see there there is that little bit of sort of ready sort of lights and things that that are in the um, the front of the painting there and I think um, as you can see here from this particular um, photograph of it I must have gone back um, you know as I often do after I've turned off the camera duh, and put a little strip of some sort of light just in there as well on either side of the mountains um, but other than that that's pretty much it so it took me about an hour to do this um, so that's a relatively, you know, a relatively quick painting. And as I said, had I spent a little bit more time on the sky, um, you know, and really, you know, um, sort of smoothed out those clouds, we could have done a little bit more with that. But I was just interested in getting it done. But it's a really great little, um, you know, sky idea. So a cooler blue in the background, graduating down into the yellowy orange with some uh, sort of uh, muted orangey red clouds, um, some... Um, of the uh, Naples yellow sort of under the clouds and then some violet clouds as well and then just some sort of a foreground you could have done anything underneath that um, that you liked anyway um, thanks for watching and um, please subscribe if you want to see um, more of the videos I will be posting up hopefully you know one or two a week is my plan and we'll see you in the next one see you later guys